And John McGee just said he's got three new properties coming soon. Woohoo! Oh, coming soon. That's a perfect segue right into MLS 8.0. Um, I don't know if you guys have any preconceived ideas about what it is and all of that. This shouldn't. This should not be a very long, dragged out kind of a discussion. Um, I think realtors try to make it more than it really is. And it's and 8.0, you know, we're going to talk about it. What is it? It's clear cooperation. So, you know, what is it? Why do we need it? And do we need it? You know, how do we use it? How do we, how can we follow it? How do we, how do we work with it? And really what everybody really wants to know is, can you get around it? How do you get around it? All of that kind of stuff. Basically, and it was adopted in January. So it, we've had a year and a half of dealing with MLS 8.0, clear cooperation. Does everyone have an idea of what it means, what it's for, anything? Okay. Basically, the, with, and I'm going to drag it down, you know me, I'm Reader's Digest. Within one business day after you get a listing, the broker, that would be me, as in Jones and Company Realty, must, that's capital M, capital U, capital S, capital T, must submit the listing to the MLS system. You've got to put it in within one business day. That is not to be confused with our local MLS rules about how many hours before you change status in there. The NAR rules, National Association of Realtors, says within one business day, you must place it in MLS. That is now putting it out to the public, and it is showing cooperation with every single licensed realtor or member of our multiple listing system. It only applies to residential right now. The NAR did not include commercial or large um, new complexes, things like that. Those are, those are currently exempt at the national level. Each state or local MLS can include commercial, can include new communities if they wanted to. Um, I asked our MLS and they seemed to not have an, I, the people that I talked to over there didn't seem to feel that we were um, including commercial <coughs> in there. And most of us don't do commercial, we do residential. So what's interesting with this, for those of you that are newer Realtors, is that you used to have MLS rules that you had three days. And so a lot of people are slightly confused because it used to, you used to have a three-day rule and you could promote something that said coming soon. Um, you could use verbiage about like pocket listings and things like that. The NAR, the um, clear cooperation is kind of annulling that. We're getting rid of that. So um, you're, you've got, like JJ had said, you've got the one day, the 24 hours to put in a listing from getting your listing agreement signed. So that means no longer, you know, are you allowed to say coming soon ahead of time or anything like that. From the moment that you market a property, you've got 24 hours and that puppy had better have an MLS number and be active in MLS. Yes. Thank you. I apologize. <laughs> Got all choked up over MLS. I mean, the, the history behind all of this, so that you're aware of it. A lot of realtors are greedy, especially in a great market, and they don't want to share their listing. They don't want to share the commission. And that's really what it comes down to. It's increased over the years. <coughs> Sorry. So that was that was the basic thought behind it. Um, it cuts it cuts agents out, and it also can skew up MLS statistics. If you're trying to create numbers and look for things, you're not going to find it. The thing that it, it hurts really is if you think about the seller. If you're only marketing it yourself, you're not taking advantage of all of those other pool of buyers that 7,000 other realtors have. So it can, do, it can be doing a service to the seller. That could be, um, you know, borders on being unethical when you do all of that. The issue came from a lot of realtors who were um, not even informing their customers once they put something in the MLS that they, uh, or sorry, once they had the listing agreement that they weren't putting it in the MLS and they were trying to sell both sides. And it really doesn't come from the hot market that we have right now, because obviously if you get a listing, you can have it sold in 24 hours. Um, this, you know, came from years and years of 
this experience happening. Um, and a lot of people just, you know, running into the issue of, and if you've been on the buyer's end for a couple of years here recently, I'm sure you've experienced it as far as, um, you know, having a buyer saying, oh, I saw this property on Craigslist, or I saw this property on the Facebook market, or I saw this property here. And you're pulling your hair out as a buyer's agent trying to figure out where it is because it's not in the MLS. And this listing agent has, you know, just gone and, you know, tried to get both sides and they're not really being very clear and open with you. And that's where all of this comes from. It's not really them trying to control you and your marketing. It's trying to make an even an even feel for everybody and keep everybody ethical, especially the listing agents, you know, and, and having open communication with your seller as far as what your intentions are as soon as you list something. And, um, you know, if, if there, there are a lot of situations where, which I'm sure JJ will get into here in a minute, um, you get a listing agreement signed, but, you know, they've got some work they need to do on the house or things like that. So you can't put it in the MLS right away. And exactly. you are protected there. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So how would, how would you use this? Um, if the customer um, really doesn't want you um, to show it to other people, things like that. The MLS clear cooperation, it does allow us some exceptions within that. Within that. So say your seller um, still needs two weeks to finish doing all the repairs and all of that kind of stuff, but you don't want to lose um, any momentum to get it out there. If your seller, if your seller wants you to do that, take that two weeks, you can sign that listing right away, which you always want to do. You want to get them to commit with you right away. We can use an MLS non-participation agreement, which will basically take it off the market. By when I say that, it won't be in the MLS for two weeks. The MLS cooperation 8.0, all of that does allow you within the Jones and Company family to market. So you can put it on the Jones and Company team page. You can directly market to anyone within the company. You can't advertise it or do anything outside of your immediate family. Just think of it that way. That way you can start creating a little bit of buzz. Let your cut, let the agents in our office know about it. And if the seller does want to allow someone from our company to see it, they can, but during that, that period, nobody, nobody except us can look at it. So if you put it out on Facebook or if you put, I mean, even just a little something on your, on your own little things like, oh, I've got a great listing and it's going to be coming soon in two weeks. If you talk about that listing, you know, what describing the house, talking about the price, address, all of that, you have now opened that Pandora's box of public uh, public advertising and then the law then that policy kicks in and you've got one business day to get it into into the MLS so so kind of think about that um, sellers can can also decide that they want it in MLS but maybe they don't want you to put it into the internet MLS 8.0 is not is not Going to, going to mess around with that. In the listing agreement, the seller can say, you know what, I don't want my address on there, right? Or I don't want it in IDX. God only knows why. But if they didn't, you can, you're, you're not violating anything like that. You're not, you're not subject to that. <clears throat> but John, coming, McGee, go ahead. John McGee asked a question um, if that two weeks was solid. JJ saying two weeks until it gets put in the MLS. That's just an example. The form, um, you know, for non-cooperation with MLS allows you to specify when it's going to be put in the MLS and how long it's going to be, you know, off, off market. Exactly. I'm going to, and I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit chat. Oh, see, I'm getting better at this. Okay. You got it. <clears throat> Woo okay. So if you go, let me see if I can just move this around you a can little drag bit. everybody's faces. It's so nice. It's being recorded. <laughs> All right, so into matrix, when you're in MLS, if you go into your links where all these great informational things are with all the, all the zoning and the rules and all of that way down towards the bottom, as all the MLS kind of stuff in here. <clears throat> so you just come down, you come down in here, here's all the profile sheets in here, notifications, violations, all the way through, through the MLS rules and regulations. So if you ever 
do you have questions about what goes in MLS? You can call Linda at the board, call me, or come go into MLS and look. Way down over here is the list is the MLS non-participation form. That form has to, must be filled out if you are going to do any kind of that little coming soon within the community. Um, if they do not want you to market the property out to anybody but Jones and Company Realty. Um, back in the old days, we used to call them pocket listings. You know, you bring me a buyer, I'll pay you. If you can get them on paper and, you know, get them to commit to a listing agreement, use the non-participation agreement. It's much better than the commission agreement, which just simply says, if you bring me a buyer, I'll pay you. This starts reeling them in and softening them up to the full-blown service that we can do for them. So you're going to use the non-participation agreement. And it says really clearly, we don't want it in the MLS. Um, it, they can also decide that they don't want it shown to any other buyer, uh, prospective buyers by any other agent. Think agent slash broker. Agent is going to be Jones and Company Realty. So you can have someone from our company show that listing as well. <clears throat> And then again, it also, we do not want the property listed on any public or private site, you know, so then you can't put it on Facebook, you can't put it on Zillow, you can't put it on, you can't put it on anywhere. Um, again, if the seller is trying to have a lot of privacy, that may be a reason that they do that. And sometimes you'll have um, a seller who it maybe is, has some notoriety and they need to have their privacy protected. So this is one way that you, that you can do it. Um, you have to have their you have to have their signature on it in order for it to be a legal binding contract. This becomes an addendum to the listing contract. It gets loaded up into app files, and then if MLS needs it, you know, if someone calls in from the public or another agent, then we then we would supply the non participation agreement to the board as proof that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Questions on any of that? All right. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, that's pretty much what um, what what 8.0 is. It's it's not really complicated. It's just staying with within those within those lines. If you go out of those lines, they have really put some teeth to this. It it can be up to fifteen thousand dollars in fines. So if you thought you know oh I'll just stick it out there and you know if I sell it and I and I make a good commission oh fooey fooey I'll pay my little tiny fine. You're thinking maybe a thousand dollar fine. Fifteen thousand dollars hurts a whole lot. Um, so we don't want you we don't want you to do that. But the main part is when you start just use it as a tool. You know when you're talking with your customers if they're not quite ready they want to do a remodeling on it or maybe that maybe they have tenants in there that are leaving in three weeks. You don't want to delay getting that listing. We all know that people change their mind and that kind of stuff. So you always want to you always want to be thinking, getting them on paper, getting them listed, getting them committed to Jones and Company Realty. So you can say to them, okay, well, you've got Airbnb, you know, for the next four weeks. Well, during the next four weeks, we can be marketing out within our company, and we've got 150 agents who have all kinds of great customer bases. So we can start raising up the excitement within the Jones and Company family. And if they have someone who's ready to go and doesn't mind, you know, trying to deal with Airbnb, um, then you then you don't lose that. But in the meantime, all those other realtors are not going to be aware of it because that's going to give me time to get your marketing all put together. You know, I think I'm going to get this, all the professional photographs done. Um, let's let's get the advertising signed up for the magazines, you know, it comes out and on October 1st, so we can get our, we can get all of our marketing put in place and just ready to hit the ground running. That's a really good way to do it. And then just have them sign the non-participation agreement. Um, and they can withdraw that when we're ready to go full live into the MLS. John McGee has a question. It says, I have a tenant occupied situation with issues where they refuse to access the property or they're refusing access to the property. Um, it says, I might be able to push an inspection if we do find a buyer, but what if I do the non MLS form and then the seller decides to advertise online on their own? <laughs> yeah. That's you have you have to really get your sellers trained to the idea that they're hiring you, the expert, to to sell their property. Uh, too many sellers go rogue and they put stuff out there, and then they get calls 
And then they go, oh, you know, here you go, John, this guy, you know, he doesn't have any money. I'm not pre-qualified him. I don't know what the heck, but I want you to, I want you to try to work with them and sell them. That can be a nightmare, you know, and if sellers start advertising their own property, people will find out the seller's addresses and they'll go knock on their doors and they'll invade their privacy, you know, and it could be, it could become a dangerous situation for them potentially. If you've got people out there, um, you know, looking at, I'm going to pick on Craigslist a little bit because it's known for so many scams in there, but what if they saw that they came and they tried to, um, talk the seller into doing something illegal or, well, they got or knocked them on the head. Head. yeah or knocked them on the head and just robbed them you know you don't know what's coming out there and that's and that's where you have to remind the seller that's why they that's why they hired us you're going to spend the time the energy and the money to get their house sold but they need to trust you would that be and, an issue with the mls 8.0 like, would that be in violation of MLS 8.0 if the seller were to advertise instead? <laughs> That's a really good question. Probably not because the seller isn't licensed. Um, but if someone suspected that you were coaching the seller to do an to do an ad and the seller said, oh, yeah, you know, Steve told me, you know, I could advertise it by myself because the realtor can't, you know, their hands are tied. Um, <clears throat> you're going to be in violation of all kinds of ethical things. And then you then you potentially are looking at a fine from anywhere from uh, from 500 all the way up to $15,000. And our, our board has enforced that one, not the 8.0, but they have given out a $15,000 fine once. So you gotta be pretty bad to get that kind of a, to get that kind of a fine. Uh, but it's part of, the whole thing would just be used as part of your listing presentation. The public doesn't know what 8.0 is, they don't really care. It's other agents that look at it. But that's just one more objection handling technique you can use. You know, I, I've got to paint my room yellow, you know, before we put it on the market. Well, okay, here's, here's a way around that instead of post-dating the listing agreement. Because if it's post-dated, it doesn't have any legal teeth until the date that the contract is on there. So you don't want to give them any little outs if you can. And it's important to know that like when we talk about marketing um, that you can only do 24 hours ahead of time, it's it's not just about posting it on social media or sending out e emails or letters. If you put a sign in the property, they are considering that marketing. So putting a sign up weeks in advance, hoping that people drive by and call you can also land you a fine. Absolutely. Yeah. If you put um, if you put a display in the window. Yeah, like like Joanna was talking about yard signs, and we get and and we have received a lot of calls about that because um, you might order the sign like three days before you put it in the MLS. Think, oh, I'll put it in on Friday, you know, put the sign up on Friday. Eh, something will happen over the weekend, and I'll put it in the MLS on Monday. Right? That's that's trying to skirt MLS 8.0. If someone sees that sign in the yard. And they call and they call and they find out that it's not in the MLS. They can report you, and that's and that's an immediate violation on that. Um, you know, we've all tried. Oh, I didn't tell. I I didn't mean it. You know, the sign guy wasn't supposed to do it until Monday, and he goofed up. <clears throat> you might get away with it one time, but if you're a consistent abuser of that, and we know there are realtors who are consistent abusers out there doing that, um, you, can, you can get into a lot of trouble. If you do. Um, if you do any kind of little ads, any kind of digital marketing at all, anywhere, anytime, that counts. That's that's advertising it. That means you have to you have to put it in one day. If you do an email blast, think about that. You know, if you put if you made a little flyer like within uh, anywhere, and then you blasted it out to your to your sphere, you're okay, right? Your sphere being agents oh, okay. only. If you do to you, if you do it to a customer database that is now publicly advertising it, even though it's your listing and you think you can do whatever you want within your listing before you put it in MLS, if somebody complains and makes a noise, that's an automatic violation of MLS 8.0. And um, Crystal asked when this goes into effect, it is currently in effect. It went into this effect January of 2020, and that's nationally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and most of us haven't really paid a lot of attention to it. And if you're doing your job right, you really never have to worry about it. I mean, that, that's really what it comes down to. Um, because Jones and Company Realty is a private company, even though we have even though we have other offices, that's considered one company, one family. Um, if you were a franchise, like say you were Berkshire Hathaway and the, the Berkshire Hathaway whole network of which is a franchise, if you marketed 
the property out to all of the Berkshire Hathaway franchises, that's a violation of 8.0 because you've gone outside of your immediate little area. It's tricky, but that's what could happen. Um, you know, even if you if you tweet it, that starts counting. So be very careful about where you start talking about about your your listings when you get excited about it. And if you're speaking in generalities, you know, oh, I'm so excited. You know, I've got an appointment. You know, I I think that I'm going to be able to have this wonderful golf access home available next week. If you're if you're just vague like that, you're okay. It's when you start saying, I've got a great house that's for sale. Give me a call and I'll give you a sneak peek. Now, now you've now you violated it. Um, there are some MLSs. Um, Miami is one that they do have a policy on on coming soon. Um, we do not. We do not at, our, at Florida Gulf Coast MLS. So you have to be careful of where you're listing too. So if you're listing in Miami, you may be able to have a little bit more freedom. But each marketplace that you do, Stellar does not have the the um, coming soon, Steve, and and those are in it. They don't they don't have it yet either. Most places really don't have it because it just gets confusing to the public and then the MLS has to start keeping track of all of these forms and all of that kind of stuff and they don't want to do, they don't they don't want to do that um, so it's really just just do it right just try to make sure that the customer knows that when they hire a realtor they're hiring a full army of experts who know how to find buyers who know how to negotiate to get them the best price and then they're hiring the Jones and Company Realty, who's in the top 15 offices and the top agents in the area, you know, and we're going to get your house sold and get you the highest amount of money and let you get out of Dodge and go to whatever you're going to do. And don't worry about, don't worry about MLS 8.0. That's my personal opinion as your broker. <laughs> so, so we're kind of, we're opening for any other kind of questions, comments, talking about the market. Um, Promote it, any of your listings. If you have a, a, a weird buyer need, share that out there with us too, because you never know who's working on a potential customer or listing. Um, Paula Clark wrote in about, um, and it has to do with MLS, but not MLS 8.0, um, opinions as to why we cannot put the, the third party information statement and confidential remarks anymore. What do you mean by third party? Like it says Paula? third party um, verified, you can't be held. Oh, <clears throat> all that stuff. Okay. Again, it comes down to sloppy, greedy realtors. And I'm just going to use the word sloppy, you know, because we have that little um, information deemed reliable, but not guaranteed on the bottom of the MLS. That is not a free pass for you to not do your, your homework and your diligence and know what you're doing. So that's, that's kind of where that started to come from because people weren't, um, they were just being lazy and they were, they were, they were not verifying the information that was going in the MLS. Um, say water and sewer is available for a utility. The seller may tell them it's water and sewer, but what if it's not? What if it's, what if it's city water and it's septic? Um, if you, if you don't do your research and you just rely upon some words like that, it could come back to haunt you. So, so don't just put the, don't just take their word for everything. Um, especially we, we now know that zoning is a real issue. The Lee County property appraiser has not been very diligent about having accurate information in there. This has come up a couple of different times on, on, on sizes of property, their dimensions. If you take them from there, um, even the zoning, we had one of our agents bought a property. The Lee County property appraiser said it was zoned um, commercial, no, zoned residential. They, the, the agent actually bought it, put it back on the market, sold it, and everybody kept saying it was residential, residential, residential. Well, guess what? The city of Cape Coral had turned it to commercial like eight years ago. And the property appraiser never caught up on it. So it, that's one of the reasons we put that little deemed reliable but not guaranteed. That will give you some protection, but I'm going to tell you, if, if you just put that little words like all they were trying to do in there, Paula, um, there's a couple of companies that were just like that um deemed reliable but you know they don't just check just do your own due diligence anything you're reading in there may not be accurate that's really not professional it's 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 not the way to do business and if you're giving out false information knowingly you could get sued legally for you know for giving wrong information so be, just i think that's why they overstepped with it and said just just take all the wording out of there but i agree there should be you know it, it's good to say you know what 
verify everything that we're, you know, that we've put in there. We've done our best, but you might want to check it out. Just be real careful how you, how you do the wording in there. I think another great idea to help you out with most of the stuff is the same place where JJ showed you forms earlier in MLS for the non-participation form. There is a, it's like a six or seven page sheet in there that has all the information that you need for MLS input. You know, you could give that to your customer and have them fill it out so that, you know, all the information is coming directly from the customer um, and, and, it's, and it's helping you with the liability. Are you guys seeing that? No, because no, we stopped the screen share. Oh, we stopped the spot. It's in the same place. It's called the MLS. What is it? What is it labeled? MLS input form. It's residential input form. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're all in there. If you're new, that's a good, that's a good practice as well. The idea behind all these little things is just to make you more professional and to do your job right. When, when the market is hot like this, everybody and their brother seems to think that they can, that they can get in and make a fast buck and sell real estate. Those make us all look really, really bad if they don't do their homework. Um, and that's where all those little rules, that's where MLS 8.0 comes in because it's just people who don't want to, don't want to earn their money. Uh, and I really, and I've been doing this for over 30 years and it's very frustrating when you, when you see people who do that, they don't, they don't know what the heck they're doing. Like we were talking about that guy coming from North Florida, wanting to sell in the Cape Coral. What the heck does he know? He's going to set himself up for trouble. You know, we all know that if we don't know the villages in, in the Orlando area, we are not going to sell them. We are going to refer them to Steve, <laughs> right? You know, if you don't know Tampa well enough and you're not going to take the time to learn Tampa, you refer it up to Robert and you don't even have to leave Jones and company realty to, to get a nice commission and, and do all that kind of stuff. I have a quick question regarding uh, something that cropped up actually just today. I have a uh, for sale by owner that is agreeing to a commission and mm -hmm. he was open to having me run an open house because he's out of town. No one's in the area. Um, and he said, well, if you'd want to put your sign up, go ahead on the house. I don't know how does that fall since it's not a listing or anything like that. How does that work? Well, I, number one, you'll get a commission agreement signed with him. Yes. Um, I would probably just to just for legal purposes, for liability, maybe have him email you saying that it's okay for you to be in his home from one to three, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that on an open house. Um, and during that time, absolutely stick the sign up. You're you're not you're not violating any MLS things right now because he hasn't signed a listing agreement. Okay. Right. So for sale by owners fall, don't, don't come into all of that. And when a for sale by owner gives you permission to hold an open house in their property and they're giving you the trust of, of you being in their house, that's so close to getting a listing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. That that's a perfect way to do it. Yeah. yeah. And those commission agreements are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's worked for me before. I just wanted to be sure. Cause I wasn't sure about putting a sign up when I didn't have a listing agreement. So. Yeah. Don't leave it there for all day long. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's what I mean. I'm like, I shouldn't just leave it there like for a week. Cause he said I could put it up there and just use my number and have people call me, but. Uh, yeah. You might get away with it one time. Like I said, if you order your sign up earlier, you know. Yeah. Okay. But just during the open house is when it should. Mm -hmm. be. Well, okay. yeah. Or, you know, if you have a commission agreement signed and you set up an appointment to show a property to the customer, you could ask this, can I put my sign up for like an hour before, you know, and if you like, especially if you're going to meet the customer right at the house, then okay. you've got the sign in front of the house too. Okay. All That's right. a really great idea. Okay. Thanks. You know, one other quote, Steve put stuff all over his cars and markets. I always thought one of the greatest ways to, to market a property that you have listed for sale is have a special little magnet sign made up just like a for sale sign. But, you know, here's a picture of the house, you know, golf access house. $500,000, ask me, and you slap it on your, you slap it on your car. I mean, somebody is going to see it while you're driving down the road and they might call you and actually want to see the house. I mean, I, you know, or follow, you know, follow me <laughs> to this, to this great listing, something like that. I mean, get, get creative, funky. I mean, we're spending so much time out on the road, might as well use it for marketing and advertising. You do t-shirts too. I think, I, mean, I think that's, that's really kind of cool, you know, for sale. And they're going to be looking at like, Oh, really you're for sale, you know, and on the backside of your shirt, you've got a really cool looking house with, with a price and maybe even an address on that. And you can make those shirts and then you give them to, to your seller and their whole entire family. They <laughs> will wear them everywhere, you know, and, and do advertising for you. I mean, think like be, be crazy with some of the stuff that you do. Candy, did you still have a question? 
Yes, it's going back to the statements in confidential remarks. I thought we weren't allowed at all to say deemed reliable and check your own listing or check your own information. I thought we weren't allowed to do that at all. You're not. Yeah, that's the MLS prints automatically on the bottom information deemed reliable but not guaranteed. That's that's there's a one little line down on the bottom of the MLS printout. So, yeah, they, they decided not to put any kind of fair warnings in the confidential remarks because people were just being super, super sloppy about new, not doing it. So, it, you know, I mean, I personally would like to see a little extra protection for us, but because everybody has just gone to that far end of, of just not caring and not really doing service to their seller, they've, they've pulled that whole little opportunity out. And what the difference is, Candy, is they're saying you're no longer allowed to type those types of statements in the confidential remarks, but MLS has protected themselves when you print out the sheet. It has a liner on there that says deemed reliable, but not, you know, that's for MLS's protection. As long, long as you've done your due diligence and do as much as you can. What you might want to do for another little layer of protection on something is if the seller tells you something, you can put in the confidential remarks, seller states you know, that the roof was replaced in 2003 or some or something like that. So if you've got anecdotal information that you're sharing, which could be important, you know, like um, it's been rumored, you know, that Sally Rowe was killed in this house, you know, seller states <laughs> or, you know, Al it's been rumored that Al Capone left his, left some money in the, in, the, in the inside wall, you know, something like that. But cover your butt by saying seller states. You know, then that way you've got your source of where you need the information. That was something that came up yesterday. We had a we had a, a massive amount of calls about lot measurements, easements, right of ways, all of that kind of stuff. And when you input your your information in the MLS, it has on there where your source is. If it's property appraiser site, other whatever, be really careful. Don't get sloppy with that. Where did you get that information? Um, and that came up yesterday. The agent took it off of the off of the tax rolls. You know, here's the lot, you know, here's the lot total point, blah, 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 blah. Put it in there. Well, guess what? The, um, it was wrong, you know, but the way you cover yourself is where did I get, where did I put that number? Where did I get it? I got it from the appraiser's site. So that, that protects your butt and, and gives you, gives you some protection with that. And that's, that's really what we're looking at is try to give the most accurate information that you can, but name your source so that you're, so that you're not just making it up off the top of your head or, or that's what a buyer is going to say you know so so you would name your source in the confidential remarks then uh, yeah and, and like i said in those those there are certain fields in mls that we already require you that, that you put your source in there but yeah i absolutely would like if like if the seller added a bathroom without a permit you know seller states added bathroom in in 1993 without a permit it's on the um, general tab, the first tab that you fill out where it asks you along the right-hand side of, did this come from the property appraiser, the seller, private survey, this, that. There's like six sections. That's where it already asks you, but, and then anything that's additional, you, yeah. would, you would cite. Like our MLS doesn't require that you have to put room sizes in, but if you're in stellar MLS, that's one of the requirements. All the room dimensions have to be in there. So where are you going to get those room dimensions? Either the seller is going to measure it and give you the measurements, or you're going to go in with a tape measure or, a, or an electronic thing and do it yourself. And that's where, I, that's where you would want to say, you know, dimensions given by the seller, something like that. Yeah, and because Paula had commented that it's not just about listing agents being lazy anymore, but it's also the sellers because they see how hot the market is and they're like, oh, who cares? Just throw it on real quick. You know, I'm going to make money. This is where it's important to put the liability and the importance so that they understand how important, you know, the legal aspect of selling a house is. Put it back on the seller with that seller's disclosure and the MLS input form. All of these things have to be deemed reliable so that you and I don't get sued when it ends up being something else. That kind of makes the reality come back to the seller of, oh, we can't just, you know, do whatever and sell it and, and, and never look back. This is still a legal sale. You know, this is still very important. So put the liability back on them. That way you can upload the seller's disclosure into MLS and you have like a signed copy of the MLS input. You've got all of that in app files. If anything comes back, you know, here's, you know, where all of my sources were from. And it's, it's not something I just made up. Absolutely. 
Yeah. And you'll find that that's what that's one reason Jones and Company Realty has been so successful. And we had to pay out. Wait for this. We hit the limit for putting out money in ACH yesterday of one hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> we couldn't pay all our agents yesterday because we had to pay out more than $100,000 worth of commission. I mean, we were doing the happy dance. This is just like phenomenal. <laughs> so keep it up. It's the worst. We can always get around, figure out another way to pay you. We can write a check. We can do wire, all that good stuff. But it was just really super exciting to see that. And that's because you guys are doing your job right. You know, most of our properties aren't rolling back and coming back on the market because all the, all that information is accurate that's out in the MLS. That's that's where all the sloppiness is coming in. These these buyers are paying overpriced for pro or they say they're paying overpriced, you know, and then they're doing their inspections and the seller failed to disclose a lot of things in there. So now they're losing the sale. It's coming back on the market. If you do it right from the beginning, the buyer can accept the fact that maybe the window isn't working because the seller already disclosed it. So that's it. Oh, and Paula says, here's a compliment. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to type it, but now I'm going to say it. I want to tell you that in this business a long time, a couple of states, um, JJ, Joanna, it's really has to do, our success has to do a lot with what you provide us. You train us. You're always there for us to ask questions, uh, to answer questions when we get into tenuous situations. So I think it's time to take my hat off, which I'm not wearing a hat, but my time to take my hat off and say thank you to Jones and Company Realty and all those people that step up to help me. Oh, we love you, Paula. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, we appreciate it. I mean, we really, we've got, we have absolutely the best team, the Triple J team, you know, Joanna, Janet, and JJ, we are here to make your lives absolutely the best we possibly can. So without further ado, we'll let you go and, we, and make some business today. Watch, watch our little emails in the team pages for fun events coming up. Um, Christmas in July is, is coming and it looks like listings are coming as well. So we'll start, we'll start putting some things out there so you can start planning and get excited about that. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace out. <laughs>